Is it just me, or in a world where gaming is as popular as it is, are gaming phones just as irrelevant as ever? Let's talk about that. Gaming phones have been around for a long time, with companies such as Razer, Asus, ROG, and Red Magic putting out some beastly devices, but I can't help but feel like those times are behind us. They came with big, fast screens, big, longevous batteries, hardware controls like capacitive buttons, headphone ports, louder front-firing speakers, and chart-topping performance hardware. Sure, they had the gamer lighting and the funky designs, but when it came down to it, there were meaningful, functional reasons to purchase those over your Galaxies, iPhones, and Pixels. The downsides to these devices? Well, they were bloated, they were cumbersome, their respective makers didn't tend to support the software for very long, and they demanded serious money, considering gaming phones typically lacked quality in their camera systems and their software support. These days, even a phone like a OnePlus 12R, Xiaomi 14, or Galaxy S23 FE will provide a lot of the benefits of a traditional gaming phone at a lower cost, but importantly, with fewer compromises in many of the other areas of the phone that actually matter. Even your average cut-down flagship will have super impressive gaming performance, big high refresh rate OLED displays that get really bright as well, and battery life to keep you going all day all while maintaining great camera quality and software support. With tools like OnePlus's Game Mode Hyper Boost 2, there are many features that help functionally bridge the gap to those gaming phones. Traditional gaming phones have never sold in large quantities, and Asus ROG is the only real gaming phone maker in the West and in the US, with Xiaomi Black Shark and Red Magic being active in limited markets. Asus made the bold decision to tone down its gamer feeling and cut down the compromises on its latest gaming phone, the ROG 8. It has a full IP68 rating, a lowered weight, and a big 50 megapixel main camera with gimbal image stabilization that actually works quite well. It's clear that the idea with this phone was to retain as many gaming features as possible, but also boost the areas that were previously weak. The issue is though, the ROG 8 is $1,100, putting it uncomfortably more expensive than the iPhone 15 Pro and Galaxy S24 Plus, and $200 more than the OnePlus 12. Let's compare it to that OnePlus 12 for a second. The ROG phone is bigger and heavier with a lower quality display, albeit at a slightly higher refresh rate. It has a worse camera system despite the changes. It only has a couple of percent bigger battery and slower charging too, not to mention the significantly worse software support going long term. In its defense, it does have the better protection at IP68. It has the headphone port, capacitive triggers, none of which can be found on most smartphones these days. But at this point, have normal phones just become so good that gaming phones aren't worth it? Well, I think that is part of the story. There are definitely going to be people out there who would buy one of these, and that's fair enough. But for the average mobile gamer, you have absolutely everything you would ever need in a normal flagship or even a cut down flagship smartphone, a flagship killer, if you will. Even something like the Galaxy S21 FE, which is a couple of years old and a cut down flagship at that, is more than enough smartphone to have you covered on the basic mobile gaming front. Even 3D stuff like Real Racing 3, COD Mobile, Genshin Impact, you've heard this all before. You may need to top it up a couple of times in the day if you're looking to play for multiple hours at a time, but the 120Hz display, the solid performance, and the decent battery life, they're all there. For anyone wondering, I thought I'd include my specific thoughts on the ROG Phone 8 quickly. It's a step up from the previous generation in that it feels easier to hold, it retains those core gamer features, and it looks sleeker, it looks less gamery. And from my short time with the device, my main takeaway is that I just don't know if it knows what it's trying to be. It lacks the rainbow RGB and striking design that I think a lot of gamers still desire, but it's not quite good enough to compete with the flagships of the world despite its price point. So yeah, it's kind of difficult. It's still fairly big and heavy, and the cameras aren't massively different specs-wise compared to last time around. They're a small step up, but I wouldn't call this a Pixel 8 or even OnePlus 12 level camera. I'm also not the biggest fan of this software layout or aesthetic. I much prefer Google's OnePluses and Samsung's. 
I do appreciate the air triggers and the headphone port, but honestly, I thought I'd missed them more when I moved back to my OnePlus 12, and in reality, they weren't really missed at all. I have to caveat that I'm not a hardcore mobile gamer, but big screens for touch controls and a headphone dongle aren't huge roadblocks for me for a good gaming experience. Going back to the cameras quickly, they're decent, there's nothing mind-blowing there, but if you were expecting a gaming phone to have bad cameras, the ROG Phone 8 isn't following that narrative anymore. Would I still rather use a lower-end Pixel or Galaxy, or a OnePlus even? Yeah, but in video, the gimbal camera setup is actually quite cool. It makes shooting at Ultra HD 4K 60fps look really stable and smooth. It's definitely a lot smoother than something like the OnePlus 12, but I'm not sure just how many people are looking at buying one of these phones, these gamer phones, with this specific feature. Like, who's buying a gamer phone for decent photos, but seemingly excellent video stabilization? It just doesn't seem to make much sense to me. But yeah, the ROG Phone 8 has some decent cameras. Battery life is fantastic and one of the big reasons to pick up one of these phones. I managed to squeeze two days from it when I wasn't gaming, so if you do plan on playing an hour or two per day, expect about a day of battery life. The ROG Phone 8's charging uh, can be done with either the side or the bottom, which is a bit strange. I really didn't find it massively impactful in practice, as cool as it sounds on paper. But the real kicker for the ROG Phone 8 specifically is that ASUS is only going to support it with two years of big software updates and then another two years of security patches. For a phone that costs four figures, there really is no excuse for not giving three years minimum, or hopefully like four years, of platform upgrades. That minimum expectation is only going to go up with the likes of Google and Samsung increasing their long-term software support. One of the biggest criticisms of the mobile gaming experience is the controls, and there have been several, you know, hundreds of accessories even, that try to alleviate this issue by giving you a more ergonomic grip or by adding much needed mappable function buttons, but they can only take you so far. And we've already seen that people are willing to bring around a much larger handheld console. Just look at how well Valve's Steam Deck has sold. Yeah, it's way bigger than the ROG Phone 8, but who cares? And that's not to mention the immensely successful Nintendo Switch. Heck, ASUS ROG already has its own ally, which to be fair, hasn't seen the same level of success, but this already niche mobile gaming segment seems to be shrinking further. For some perspective, you can pick up a Pixel 7a and a Steam Deck OLED for the price of a ROG Phone 8. That's a combination that I personally dailyed for a couple of months and really enjoyed. If you're happy picking up a second-hand smartphone though, something like a OnePlus 11 is going to give you even better mobile gaming experiences with much better performance alongside a dedicated handheld for less than the ROG Phone 8. This separate handheld running something other than Android is a really important point. Android just isn't ready to become the new gaming operating system. This could be due to the lack of games, you can't download full fat sort of Apex Legends or Halo Infinite on your phone. And game streaming is great and all that, but it does rely heavily on a good connection, whether that be internal or external, and even then isn't the same as playing locally. At least by having discrete devices, you get the best of both worlds. There are some great Android games out there that I want to play, but also let me jump on the Steam Deck and play through GTA or play SnowRunner with the boys. That's entirely possible with two separate devices. Gaming phones were never really the most popular, but with the influx of handheld PCs and consoles, the writing is on the wall for gaming phones, and the ROG Phone 8 just feels like a last ditch effort to keep its name in the game. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Please do like and subscribe if you're new around here to never miss another upload. I've been Ryan Thomas with Android Police and I'll catch you later. Cheers.